Hello. Welcome back to my channel for the third episode of Showing the Love. And first of all, before we get into that, I really need to apologise for the delay in producing the third episode. As I thought might happen, my other life as a PhD student has been incredibly demanding. I've been trying to find the time to film this for over a month now, and my schedule has finally cleared up, sort of. I'm skiving. Enough to allow me to actually do this. Now, for those of you who haven't watched this series before, the idea here is to showcase those YouTube um, crafting YouTubers who have less than 500 subscribers, but who ought to be definitely better known than they are, hence the title, Showing the Love. All the YouTube channels with their associated links, that is Etsy, Instagram, blogs, website, you know, whatever, will be linked in the description box down below. And I really encourage you to go and check out some of these people and follow them, you know, however you follow them. Anyway, first up, here's Jeanette from Crafty Dog. I actually reviewed Jeanette on the 25th of September which tells you how long I've actually been trying to get to do this. Anyway, back then she had 331 subscribers, but I've just checked and she's now up to 358. Her most recent offering at the time of reviewing was Botanical Entomology and Shades, which is a flip through of three journals. Although I have to say that since then she's actually done another 19 videos, which is um, in the last month alone, that's pretty prolific. Anyway, back to the review. Pay close attention to the last one in that uh, little group of um, journal shades. The cover has a really unusual pocket form that I haven't seen before and I really like that. Unfortunately, the subtitles hadn't kicked in when I watched it, so I don't 100% know what Jean Jeanette was saying. But if you like French style birds, then you will like shades, I promise. I don't know if it's up for sale, but if it wasn't in the shop when I looked, I, I envy whoever has it, if they have it. One thing I do like about Jeanette is that she has a really good range of videos. It's a nice mix of tutorials, craft with me, and flip throughs. However, I think part of the problem, and Jeanette is certainly not alone in doing this, lies in her not indicating what completely what each of her videos are about. I mean, take book page ephemera, for example. This is actually a kind of craft with me as she makes some pockets out of book pages, which is great and I find it really interesting. But if you're somebody who is looking for something particular, then the title isn't that illuminating. It may be, looking at her channel, that the particular video may have been meant as something as, um, as a continuation of a whole series of videos. Um, but I still think she needs to to indicate more clearly whether it, what kind of video it is. And this is something that those with zillions of subscribers, I mean, I have noticed. I mean, I'm not going to name them, but we all know who we're talking about here. But they tend to do that really, really well. They classify their videos very clearly, whether it's tutorials, quad with me, flip through. So whatever, they've got clear titles and they put that information in their description box so you know exactly what you're getting when you click play. Quart with me using book pages for ephemera would almost be better marked as a tutorial or something like that because she shows you how to create really useful sort of multi-pocket fake envelope type thing and just spare book pages. It's just really useful. I will be giving it a try myself. But I think at the end of the day that we, as, as content creators, if you like, we need to be aware that there are so many people out there creating YouTube content. We have to just, we have to make ourselves easy to find. We have to make ourselves clear to people because there is just, most of us just don't have the time to sit there and watch hour and upon hour upon hour of video. But I it that we're looking for we want to be able to find quickly and, you know, just to, to get to it. Um, so, you know, we need to be able to sort of make it easy for people to find us and to find the content that they want to find. 
And if they, they don't get that, then they're not going to stick around. So it's really important to remember that and try and uh, make, make their life easier. Think about how you, as a viewer of other people's content, find them and respond to them and use them and then turn that around and make sure that you give them what they want um, in terms of, you know, understanding what it is that you're going to be showing them before they even kick click play anyway all this said Jeanette very definitely comes up with some good ideas I mean for example in finishing touches to book pages she shows you how to make a really pretty sort of stop sounds old but if you've got your book page here and you've got your belly band belly band going across there you tuck something in the top behind your belly band now unless you've got a really really kind of tight belly band or narrow belly band and you're holding your book up i find that things always just slip out of the belly band and it, it drives me nuts what Jeanette does is to create a sort of lip at the bottom so that when you put your belly band down in there it's not very big but when you put your thing in down um, behind the belly band it just stops it from falling out and it's absolute genius and it means that you can have a belly band without turning it into a, you know, a full-on pocket. It's just a tiny little thing at the bottom. It's almost like a tab, in a way. Um, and uh, it's brilliant. Great idea. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, another video to check out. If you have a book cover that you love with good end papers, then this is definitely one you have to check out. Because Jeanette's method of preparing um, the book cover in Cutting a Reader's Digest book, Getting It Ready to Use, that's the title. Because this will preserve and reuse the end papers and in a hidden file as well. It's a really good way of working with existing book covers. So if you, if you want to be able to show off the cover, then definitely pay attention to that video. I would also check out the Bees series. I mean, the Bee Journal is lovely. It's a chunky monkey. But it's a good one. The colour choices are great. Um, she's put lots of thoughts into how somebody would use that journal. I mean, the wee bit you can see here is some um, tucked into a pocket. It's a small notebook that the recipient of a journal could very easily just take out and put into a handbag. Slightly French, sort of botanical, countryside, feel to be. Um, I really like that. Last but not least of the videos that I'm highlighting from Jeanette is Island which was up for sale on her Etsy shop, or at least it was at the time I wrote this. This is based on the book Island, Diary of a Year on Eastdale by Garth and Vicky Waite. Now, this is a lovely book. I have a copy myself. It's very much in the same vein as Edith Holden, ever popular Edith Holden, but um, brought up much, into, much um, later. So I think it was probably written in the 80s and 90s, something like that. She's made the entire journal on screen over a series of eight videos so you can see exactly how she's done the book throughout now i haven't watched all of these but in the final flip through from the book you can see that while she's used the odd page from the book in the journal as a full page she's primarily used elements from the book pages to make a summary themes of material that echoes island in theme and color from elsewhere to give a very sympathetic journal that makes the original book look very, very good. I know that if I was given this as a gift, I would be wanting to find the original book to read because what she does is she draw you in with the pictures and the quotes from the book and it's really clever the way she's done it. I love the stencils that she's peppered throughout, which are really nice. Very sea themed and there's still tons of room to write whatever you want to write. It's just, just fab. That said, the tag that she's created in this video are very, very pretty. And if you like your botanicals, then uh, Tracy Fox style, you will definitely find a lot to like there. <clears throat> I'm getting all growly. Next, we're going to be looking at Feathers and Ferns, a channel run by Priya from South Africa. I have to say that the recent craze for answering 10 crafty questions has been a godsend for me because... At times it's quite hard to find out details like names and things like that if people don't have um, Instagram or Etsy stores. And I really hate referring to people by their YouTube names unless, you know, like me, they happen to have their YouTube name as their actual name. But I digress. Priya's version of 10 crafty questions is 
a little chit chat from his start there. It's a pleasure to see somebody face to face for a change instead of seeing their hands. And Priya I've actually presented very well. Although I think she's nervous. She was nervous at the time of filming. The first video on her channel is from a year ago. Um, she had 12 videos there in total. It's a really nice mix of flip throughs and other types. So she's got tutorials, she's got a couple of quarts with me. Mostly flip throughs though. The most recent is uh, Geisha's Diary, which is what actually brought her to my attention. She posted a link to in one of the Facebook groups I'm in, and um, which is a stunningly beautiful journal, supposedly by an anonymous Geisha. It was discovered in, discovered, in an old house which used to be a home for Geishas, and it's stored in this gorgeous bag. You're a fan of the way that the booksmith creates themed journals, you know, with a sort of the backstory to it, then you'll you'll like this a lot. Priya talked about the Japanese culture and the knowledge that she has to create this journal. I mean I really recommend watching this entire video because it's an education in itself. This is the journal that's inside the bag and these pictures that I've taken from Etsy. I would say don't really do the journal justice and that's not Pooh's fault, it's not a bad photo, it's more that when you watch the video you understand from the close-up, from the way she shifted, just how rich and how gorgeous this cover is. You can't see that in a single static photo so yeah, go and watch the video people, please, if you do nothing else. The one tutorial that is there is in is on um, altering a tea box. Now this is something you may not be familiar with. It's just a divided box to keep tea bags in. And she shows how she preps it for painting, paints it, sands it down again and uh, decoupages with napkin. And the end result is very pretty. It will certainly make a lovely gift for someone. Um, there are some useful tips for decoupaging. Apparently decoupaging on chalk paint, for example, means that you need more, need more glue. I mean, you know. So I think it's worth watching this, even if you're not planning to decoupage an ad identical box or, you know, to use the same materials. Um, I think it's worth watching. Um, I think one of the things that's worth saying, if you ever do watch this, Priya, is that if you're doing anything like um, rubbing a box with wax or standing it down, whatever, that makes the table shake a lot, so do consider the impact that this will have on the camera. It makes it wobble, and it's um, quite unpleasant to watch. If I do this, you know, you can see what I mean. Um, so yeah, do, do think about that, and maybe connect your camera to something else if you can, if you possibly can. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch the first craft with me because there are no subtitles, which happens sometimes with YouTube. But her second craft with me had subtitles and this one was about creating a mixed media journal cover. Now I think it's worth saying that Priya is, is an artist really and by that I mean she likes to work with mixed media and you know, if you look at her Instagram that will, you will see that. So a mixed media cover should be right up her alley really and, and so it is. Um, I mean this is the end result and there is a whole range of techniques that I've demonstrated in that craft with me video. It's worth watching for that alone. On the other hand, if florals are more your thing, then definitely check out one called My Nature Notes, a floral junk journal, with tons of florals and botanicals, a very shabby chic style. And I really like the fabric flowers that are on that cover. I mean, Priya, please do a tutorial on how to create those. Please. There are more videos from Priya and I hope we hear much more from her, especially if she continues to produce work of the quality of Geisha. Amazingly, she only has 221 subscribers on the day that I reviewed her, 27th of October. This is crazy. Go and check her out. So, subscribe. But going back to this. From South Africa, we go to Canada and Edith from Olio Journals. Edith has been on YouTube for four years and on the date of review, that's the 27th of October, she had 413 subbies, so she's pushing the 500 mark. Now, I really debated with myself as to whether to include this review. To be honest, 
I don't do bad reviews in the sense that I don't see the point of being catty for the sake of it and instead I prefer to try to strike a balance with giving praise where praise is due with constructive feedback. If I can't find something positive to say about somebody's channel, if I dislike it that much, I won't do a review. That's that simple. However, with Edith, since most of her videos are flipped through, so very, very few, in fact, just one, have subtitles, I'm really struggling with giving a review. Partly because of the lack of explanation as to what things are or how they're made or how Edith feels about them. But also because of the lack of other elements to the channel like tutorials and craft with me's. I don't know whether the lack of subtitles is because Edith doesn't talk in them. That's possible because I know she has music in them. There is a music license on the videos. But if, they, if it is the case, it does make it a lot less, a lot less accessible. And I would say, emphasise the importance of thinking about accessibility, please. I mean, this is for everybody, not just for Edith. Think about people who have hearing loss and make sure you can turn, turn subtitles on if you, if, you, if, you have, if you can. But it is a shame. And Edith, Edith has great talent. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the one with subtitles that I saw was a Christmas journal with a nutcracker theme in 2016. It was lots of really lovely, bright, Christmassy images. And if you look at another one, which is Fabric TN Journal with a removable signature insert, ask them in questions. Where do these pages come from? I mean, some of them I recognise, Edith Holden is some, you know, everybody knows Edith. But what was it about the pages that she chose, the material that she chose? What drew them to her why did she choose them what what how does she feel about the journal that she created it could, it could almost be a box and a notebook from a shop you know she may have had some kind of a break because there is quite a substantial gap between her third last journal which is alice in wonderland and the two recent offerings which was just three weeks ago Alice is dated July 2018. That's a gap of a, more than a year. Her soft cover Halloween zine is full of lots of lovely orangey spooky colours, pages with stamps on and lots of room for journaling. Halloween Notebook 2 is a simple, similar um, soft cover notebook. Both of them have a die cut or more possibly, I think, a hand cut spider's web as the first page. Which is a fab idea. It's just you've got your cover here and then the spider's web is there before the first proper page, if you like. And it's brilliant. It's great. I mean, I'll be stealing that if I ever do a um, Halloween journal for sure. I just wish that Edith would do more to draw us in to make the journals interesting. And I think half of why journals sell is because the buyer... I mean, I've only ever bought one journal by somebody else. Um, for the DB. But I know that when I'm flipping through that, when I'm looking at it, I've, I see certain pages and I remember her creating them on film. I remember her talking about them. And that's a really important part of why people buy journals, I think, um, because of a story that is crafted by the seller. And they retell those stories to themselves when they're flipping through. I mean, these can be outright stories in the way that the booksmith does it, or just the story of a journal and what it means to the person who created it. But it's an important part of journal making and selling, and I would encourage those who don't currently do this to perhaps look at the way that they sell their work and to consider this kind of element of selling, and they might find that their sales increase and pick up accordingly. Anyway, from Canada we go across the pond to Europe and to Germany. Jeanette Wild has 465 subbies at the time of reviewing and since October 2018 has done over 30 videos starting with a Christmas gift mini album. This is a flip through of an album with an unusual branding as she's used Coptic Stitch and I really like that. 
Sadly, there are no subtitles, so I'm not able to follow along with whatever Jeanette is saying, if she's saying anything. But the journal itself is beautiful. There's lots of really lovely vintage images of Christmas and the colours and the images she's chosen are really evocative of Christmas. I mean, look at this page with the angel and the music paper on the left. And on the right, I mean, I assume it's a die cut Christmas tree which essentially acts as a belly band with some lovely pretty envelopes tucked behind it. But for a real feel of what Jeanette can do, I recommend skipping forward instead to Sherlock Crime Detective Mystery Junk Journal, the title, which is a journal she's made for her mother, as she explained. The handsome cover comes from an old, I think she said 1837, copy of Romeo and Juliet, which has been repurposed. And the book is fab. It, it, it opens with a book attached to the inside cover. And now, by this I mean, if you've got your cover here, you've got your pages sticking up there, not a regular book, what she's done is to attach a cover so that the spine, if you like, is on this side. Think about how a lap book operates. It's on there. And it's just only a few poses. There's nothing, good, nothing very thick. Um, but... But it starts out with um, four plastic holders containing cards with images of foamy detectives tucked inside it and behind that some paper pages. It's, it's brilliant. It's wonderfully imaginative. It's a great idea for doing something a little bit different with those inside covers other than just you know, a text part or a pocket or something. It's a big book, but it's not floral or anything like that. It's almost masculine in a way. It's something, certainly something like this could be given as a gift to a, a man who, if he was interested in Sherlock Holmes. There's some great imaginative ephemera in this. Another great idea, little tags on paper clips um, with numbers on. The idea is that, so if you've got your paper clip with a tag on it and a number one, for example, that number one relates to an index in the back of a journal, so you can keep tabs on what is um, where in the journal. I mean, it's a great idea. It's a simple idea and it allows the user to keep track of what's going on in the journal. And I can see this idea being repurposed in any number of different ways. Great. The whole thing is full of lots of really thoughtful touches like that. If you're interested in making this kind of journal, then really this video is a must watch for ideas and for inspiration. Now, the one thing I wasn't able to find for Jeanette is an Etsy store. She doesn't seem to have one. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeanette. She seemed to do these journals for the love of it. Okay, we all do that, essentially. But how we deal with the inevitable pile of journals that, you know, when we've made them, a lot of us deal with that issue, a space issue, I suppose, by selling them. She doesn't seem to do that. She seems to give them away as gift or something. And that's fine, that, you know, that's, that's her choice. But the fact that she's not selling her work gives her the freedom that most of the rest of us who are selling don't have. So, for example, if you look at the Peter Rabbit mini album, you'll see what I mean. This uses lots of images from the Peter Rabbit books and other images of dressed rabbits. And it's really good to look at. It's a uh, fun and it's childlike in a way that adults can appreciate as well, I think. But this album will probably not be sold. I think copyright issues would prevent that. But as a gift, of course, it's perfectly fine. And lucky Jeanette that those like her, that they can actually get to work with material that those of us who can't sell, who sell, can't work with. You know, I, I envy her. Quite a few of the next videos are DTPs, that's design team projects, taking the digital papers from designers and creating journals with them. Now, her guest DTP for Tracy Fox is worth a look, especially if you like Tracy's Oula Chic kit, or if you're fond of the sort of vintage French feel. There's a lot to like there. Subtle greys and blues and pinks. Some French vocabulary cards, which I really like. Lots of images of ladies' clothing, sewing, roses, the Eiffel Tower. I mean, all of that is right up my alley. It's a big journal, and it would take a while to get through the flip through, but it's worth it, I think. And then you go from vintage French cheek to British steampunk. 
I mean, the net really shows the versatility in steampunk junk journal. It's another one that's really worth watching for ideas and inspiration. In fact, I go so far to say that Jeanette should be bookmarked purely for inspo. This journal is full of travel and adventures and technology and it would make a great gift for someone who is into that whole theme. What she does is a tad more unusual is not to restrict herself to the obvious colours of woody browns and metal greys. She incorporates blues and softer greys as well in a way that really sort of helps to lift the whole journal. My one criticism of her channel is that I wish she would do more with it. Now, by that, I don't mean videos. I mean, she's prolific enough, prolific enough on that front. But in terms of background decoration, all of which help to sell her as a brand. And I, I realise she may not be interested in selling her work. But if she's interested in building subscriber numbers on her, on her channel, then considering things like branding and other types of social media will only help with that. But that's apart. There are so many videos that I could enthuse over in, on her channel. Um, but I will leave you to discover those. Instead, I'm going to scoot forward in time to her most recent offering, which is called Mushroom, which is another DTP for Louise Heinzel. I hope I'm saying that right. The cover is unusual, it's lovely, it's very soft, floppy in a really nice way. Grey leather with an unusual but very fitting closure. Now that leather looks to be really tactile. Um, I think if I have this journal I will be constantly stroking it in a way that would probably be quite off-putting to say to you around me. But what's really apparent in watching this after having leapt forward from her earlier work is just how much Jeanette has grown. I mean, my work, she's developed into a real artist. I mean, just look at the inside cover of this journal, the way that she's had the confidence to let that glorious teal coloured on the inside of the leather speak for itself and the dragonfly on the first page. The colours echo each other in a really lovely way. I mean, she's thinking, and I hate this phrase, but she's thinking, She's, she's thinking outside the box, she's looking at materials, thinking about how she can use things in different ways. And it really shows throughout this journal. I like the way that she closes off side pockets. Um, I mean, you know how if you created a side pocket that's the full height of the page and you tuck something in at the top, unless it's, um, it's quite tight and you tuck the book up, it tends to fall out and it's kind of always annoying to me. So what she does is to put um, a little something stuck at the bottom so it shortens the height of the pocket you tuck it in and it stays there it's brilliant do you watch the video you see what i mean um it's um her idea is a very neat one um it's brilliant she says that um all of the, that that particular video was a learning curve for her and that that, that may be true but you know what you know if that's the case then lady i cannot wait to see where you go next last up is sherry from Studio 28E Journal Creations with 275 subscribers. Sherry is from Indiana in the States and I sat through her 10 question challenge first and initially she seemed really unsure, really awkward. I mean, much like, um, oh, didn't matter. My brain just went blank. Um, initially she seemed really sure, really unawkward, perhaps because the camera is on her for a change rather than on her hands. And I think this is common amongst the crafting community. They're so used to the camera being pointed down that when it's on them instead, it can kind of stiffen up. But when she was talking about her love of crafting, where it comes from, she suddenly seemed to relax and forget about the camera and just focused on on her own mind and reliving her her memories and it was really nice to see. Um, she had them. Um, she was talking about totally adorable um, descriptions of making cots and playpen for baby dolls that she had. And what really comes across in this video is the the, the wealth of experience that somebody like Sherry has, and how it would be a pleasure to sit down and just talk and craft with somebody like her. 
just talk crafty stuff and ideas, you know. Her, her love for creativity, for crafting, is really palpable. I mean, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Sherry. It's a lovely video. Her first ever video, which was called um, Beach House Journal, was back in July 2017, so it's been around a while. And actually, it's really clear from this video that she has actually been doing it a while, and by that I mean journal making. All the things that we've come to expect on, in a journal are present, you know, there's a variety of uh, papers, ephemera, there's um, it's a hardcover, three signatures, great. And as might be expected of a beach journal, the colours are sandy and blue with a few touches of pink. And so a few other really nice um, elements throughout. So for example, she's threaded um, pebble beads onto the end of a tie from the middle, middle of a signature, as you can see in this picture. Now the biggest issue in this video is that she's shot it in portrait mode. So she's held her camera like that. So it's more difficult to see the detail when you're watching it on screen. However, Sherry fixes that quite quickly. Her next journal is in landscape mode, so she's holding the camera this way. And it remains that way until November, November of last year, when it suddenly twitches back into portrait mode for around six months, which is a real shame. Especially when you're showing journals and you want to be able to see the detail that's inherent within the journal. It does make it more difficult to see um, in portrait mode because it chunks everything down. So if you do it in a landscape, when it um, appears on the screen, you can see it in full and it's, uh, it's much better. She does have a nice mix of tutorials, of flip throughs and other types of video. Her weekend finds seem to be what other people call haul type videos. I think I prefer her name. I quite just like the term haul. That's me. They are chatty types of videos where she shares her thoughts about what she's found and I quite like these, they're gentle and they're good for watching over a break with a copper. Here for example she's sharing what she would do with the books that she found. The uh, Another one, the Boho Bee tutorial is pretty good. Don't expect a concrete lesson, you know, a step by step, you know, this is what you do in various stages. It's more of a craft with me with specific thoughts from her on how to do the things that she's doing but it's still worth watching for all that and the resulting boho bead that she makes is so pretty other tutorial topics include making die cuts out of beverage cans you know coke cans and that kind of thing how to paint them with alcohol inks and uh, dyeing paper with red cabbage water i'm going back to watch this one after i'm done filming this she has a couple of videos on altering Altoid tins as well as mouthful. So that you can see that Sherry has a whole range of crafty experience which she puts to very good use. I would definitely go and check Sherry out and also check out her Etsy store. If you're after anything that is crocheted, whether that be lengths like lace, you know, long lengths, or more like flowers that go round, then Sherry has some very pretty items ready to go, as well as a number of digital kits that you can download. Right, that's it for this time. Please do go and check out the crafts that I've featured here. All the links that you need are in the description box below. Show them some love. If you think that there is a good channel that deserves, that you think deserves to be better known, even if it's your own, I don't care. It must have less than 500, 500 subscribers. You let me know, please. I make no promises that anybody will be with you, but I do maintain a list of bookmark channels. And it is that list that I turn to in order to create this video. So I can I promise that you'll go on the list, if nothing else. Previous videos in this series are in the Showing the Love playlist on my channel. The link to that will be below. If there's any questions or comments, you know the you know you know how it is, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, ring that bell. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye for now.